What's going on everyone? Happy Monday to everyone. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe and healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. And if you did test positive, hopefully you have a full and speedy recovery. It is time now for the Monday edition of the Pandemic Update for Labor Day Monday, September 4th. 2023 happy labor day to everyone who celebrates labor day today all right several things today first off we're coming off of a pretty big holiday weekend a lot of people right now you might be in your car traveling back home from the holiday weekend sitting in traffic somewhere for many people um it's your last day of summer school is going to start up tomorrow for the remainder of the people who did not go back yet and there's a lot of reasons to believe that uh, COVID is going to continue to run high whether it keeps rising remains to be seen but COVID is going to continue to run high in places where school is just starting chances are it'll start to be some more COVID cases and one place that is starting to see a rise in COVID cases is the St. Louis metro area and it says here in this article with school starting back up and the weather cooling we're seeing more positive COVID-19 cases in the metro. And I was actually alluded to that St. Louis still has a COVID dashboard. So let's uh, take a look at that, shall we? Now, there's not a lot that we can take a look at here, but it does give us a sense of what's going on in St. Louis. It says seven-day case rate per 100,000 is at 84.4. Average daily new cases diagnosed is at 120. And hospitalizations, I'm assuming this is going by the CDC metric, is at low. The total number of cases, which we know is likely an undercount, this is pandemic total, 303,978. And accumulative deaths are at 3,842. And you can clearly see it here. Can we zoom in on this chart? I think we can. You can clearly see on this chart, which I did have. Let's just refresh this. You can, what I'm trying to show you is that on the chart, their data, here it is right here. We won't try and zoom in. It's tr starting to uh, rise. You can clearly see the rise. Similar to what we're seeing up in New York State, how there is a rise. And this rise started back in July, and it's continuing, it's continuing to grow. Now, is it as big as last winter's wave? No, not yet, but... Take a look at this. If I could zoom this in, you could see here that, you know, it is still growing and it's starting to grow a little bit faster. It's going to get close to them uh, elevated levels we saw last winter again. So not good to see. Then there is this. Sunday's Metallica show in Glendale postponed. The lead singer of Metallica has tested positive for COVID. So um, this is not good. But just another case of where there's illness within a band doesn't even have to be COVID there's just a lot of sickness going on with these performers as of lately and it's not good all right checking in now on the BA 2.86 variant the total number of cases is now at 48 Denmark has 12 cases United Kingdom has seven United States has five Sweden has five Thailand has four South Africa has three the following countries have two France Israel and Portugal and then we come down here to Canada, Germany, Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Switzerland, which all have one case now. And these are just cases that we know about. If it's showing up in the wastewater, that means there could be more cases than this. Let's take a look. I'm going to move myself to the left for this because it'll be easier for you to see. These are the latest variants of COVID. We don't have a lot of things to show you today, so I'm going to uh, go over a couple things with you, including the latest variants. EG.5 continues to lead in the way. It's at 21.5%. FL1.51 then comes in at 14.5%. Then you have a bunch of other variants in the XBB family that do show up. But then I want to draw your attention to this. And we mentioned this on Saturday. There is now this HV.1, which is at 5.1%. Honestly, I'm not seeing a lot said about that. There's so much focus on BA 2.86 that I honestly don't know much about the HV.1. I mean, I'm not seeing much about it on Twitter. A lot of people basically just said when the CDC update, hmm, look at this. HV.1 was not even in the picture, and suddenly HV.1 has come into the game at 5.1%. Also keep in mind with this, let's come down here. There's another EG uh, 6.1, all right, that's at 1.8%. But then you have this GE.1, 
Yeah, that randomly popped up as well in the most recent update, and that's now at 1.6%. You have a whole slew of other ones down here below. I think there's like a total of 25 different variants here. Crazy, isn't it? All right, here is the heat surveillance dashboard. It has not updated for this week yet, but what I can tell you is what I'm expecting just because of the expected weather. See these uh, dark brown colors? Dark brown means much higher than average. I think we're going to see that spread up into the Mid-Atlantic and maybe into the Northeast. It's going to be very hot. I mean, it's 94 degrees here. I'm looking at my weather station here. It's 94 degrees here right now in Philadelphia. And this is not even the hottest day of the heat wave. Heat-related illness, it's going to rise in places like Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia. Ohio, it already started last week, but it's definitely going to start. And check this out. I was actually wrong. Okay, so this did update on September 4th. I'm surprised. I didn't think it did because, you know, today's a holiday. But we hit the refresh button, and look at that. It updated today. What we will not get today is, or at least we have not had so far, is Walgreens. It actually says in their news and notes that Walgreens will not update until uh, the day after holiday. I'll keep hitting refresh all day, though, because, as you just saw, we got surprised with uh, the heat-related map. All right, taking a look at air quality values, we expect that air quality values with the heat that's building, generally from the Mississippi River line on eastward, uh, we expect air quality to be just generally poor, and you can see that here. It's poor, it's starting to drop. Then we come out to California, a little bit concerning. North Dakota, uh, Montana, even eastern Idaho, and then right up into Canada, you can see here just some very bad air qualities, and that's because of a wildfire, and I should zoom in to note on this, we don't have a lot of sites in South Jersey, but if we had more, you would see slightly worse air, or at least I suspect you would see slightly worse air qualities, because I believe it's in Lane Township, New Jersey, or excuse me, Lacey Township, New Jersey. There is an ongoing wildfire. Haven't heard any updates. It was up to 300 acres as of last night at 0% contained. My suspicion is maybe it's at least a little bit contained now, but that's got to be causing some air quality issues. The last uh, wildfire in New Jersey did as well. I do have a channel where we talk about climate and weather, and that is Climate Data Report. I also have a Twitter account at Climate Data Report. It's spelled a little bit differently. I'll have it down below where uh, I tweet all things climate and weather. And this week, all eyes are going to be on the tropics yet again, because there is yet another tropical system out in the Atlantic. And this one, the modeling saying is going to get strong, so we have to watch. I mean, ugh, it's going to move west and could impact somebody. Walgreens, let's refresh this again, just to be sure. I'm confident they're probably not going to update today. It's a holiday. If they did, I would be really shocked. Now, no update yet. But, hey, if they do anything, I'll let you know on Twitter. Taking a look at wastewater for this week, and you know the deal. The Midwest started rising again. The South dropped a little bit. The West is rising. The Northeast is rising. We suspect the South may rise again. There's still outbreaks down there, but who knows? Traditionally, the South would peak in August and then drop in September, but things are different this year. The new variant came a little bit later. Things Things are different. Take a look at the CDC. If you did not see the wastewater update, we did that just yesterday. Taking a look here at wastewater scan. And this is something we do want to take a look at because I promised you we would do, let's refresh this. I promised you we would do a couple sites in California throughout the week. So let's just do that right now. And let's, how about we go up to the Bay Area? Let's see what's going on in San Francisco. You can see here, this particular site in San Francisco, wow, this is good to see. The overall trajectory was up, but now it's seen a dramatic drop in COVID. That's good, but ugh, not like seeing this. Influenza is starting to rise. RSV is dropping at this time. HMPV is dropping. Mpox, not an issue. And norovirus is dropping at this time. Let's do one more site. Then we're going to go and take a look at some hop of world data and let's come down here to los angeles shall we let's see what's going on you know what let's do this one up here on the left where we have four million people served this is a pretty big wastewater site COVID, the overall trajectory is up no influenza just yet rsv did rise now it dropped back to zero hmpv was an issue earlier in the summer now it's not no mpox and dropping neuro 
virus. Alrighty, we want to take a look at Hub, Bub, World, and their data, and we want to take a look at the prevalence for COVID in several different places. We'll do some on the West Coast, we'll do Chicago, we'll do Florida, and we will do the Northeast corridor, maybe Texas too. So uh, starting off here, you can see nationally, Florida, look at that, super concerning down around the Miami area. The I-95 corridor up in the Northeast is concerning, Chicago is concerning. Uh, look at this, I'm seeing Louisiana, some black there, that's really concerning. Then you see around Texas, some concerning areas, and starting to get concerning in California as well. So let's take a look at a uh, few states here. Let's start off with California. Why don't we? And you can see here, we do have some higher areas that are showing up for COVID. On the map, you can see some uh, areas are really high down around Los Angeles and again in the Bay Area. And then we'll take a look at, this is for COVID, let's take a look at flu. Flu is not too bad as of yet, but although we do know in San Francisco it is starting to rise. According to wastewater, RSV, not really much of an issue. Influenza-like illness overall, you can see here there is a 20 area that is showing up, so that means it's relatively high. Usually we can uh, hover over to individual counties and see what the actual numbers are. I guess that's not working today. That's okay. As long as you can see the color on the map, that is good enough. Let's take a look at D.C., shall we? Uh, D.C., wow, you're seeing here purple as well, and so that's the highest level. That's not good for influenza-like illness. RSV is slightly concerning. Flu, not that concerning yet. And COVID, wow, COVID is really high at this time. And remember, this is prevalence of COVID and all these other indicators within a five-minute walk. Let's go down to Florida. You can see here, Florida is super concerning in the southern portion of the state. And down around Miami, then around Tampa Bay, Orlando. Also slightly concerning around Jacksonville for COVID. How about flu? A little bit of flu starting to show up. RSV, RSV is starting to increase here. Wow, look at this. And influenza-like illness, you can see it's just bad throughout the majority of the mainland. The panhandle, the western panhandle is where it's a little bit uh, worse. Then coming up here, let's do Georgia while we're at it too. And look at Georgia, wow. Around Atlanta, influenza-like illness is running high. RSV is not terrible yet, neither is flu, but we suspect that will increase in the coming weeks because we know the south is starting to increase. Uh, so that's Georgia. Let's go out to Texas, shall we? What's going on in Texas? And just a few concerning areas. Dallas, Austin, Houston. Not not all that terrible, actually. I mean, Texas, compared to the numbers, now influenza-like illness, you do see a lot of purple counties here. Some random ones in rural Texas. Then Houston, uh, Austin, San Antonio. And moving on now, let's go up to the northeast, shall we? Let's take a look at Pennsylvania. What's going on in my state? Wow, purple down in Philadelphia County, Montgomery County, Delaware County. It's concerning. Not coming up as concerning up in Center County. Allegheny County is a little high. That's for influenza-like illness. And COVID, you actually have a black area, which is really high in Philadelphia and Delaware counties at this time. And it's increasing. It is increasing across uh, portions of Central Pennsylvania, even the Lehigh Valley. And then taking a look at flu, Flu is not too bad at this time. RSV is not bad. We already did influenza-like illness. And now let's go up to New York, and then we will do New Jersey. Up in New York City is obviously the highest area for everything. Here's influenza-like illness, which is high on Long Island as well. And then coming over here to COVID, wow, COVID is really high in the uh, boroughs of New York City. And even on Long Island, it's, you know, it's above 10, but... If I could hover over on this on New York City, we'd probably be in the thousands in some of these because, yeah, that's just how serious it is there right now within a five-minute walk. And plus, you're in a really populated area there. Taking a look at flu, eh, slightly concerning in New York City. We won't worry too much about flu to the second half of a September up there. You know, once everyone's back in school, then we'll see what ends up happening. New Jersey, what's going on there? Flu's not bad in New Jersey. Neither is RSV. COVID is pretty bad in the northern half of the state. And yeah, it's still concerning at the shore at well. In New Jersey, they call it the shore, not the beach. And uh, parts of that will start to shift 
to inland because shore season is coming to an end, though on weekends there'll still be some people that go down there. This is when the retired people get to enjoy their shore time or the locals down there get to enjoy their time at the shore. Influenza-like illness in New Jersey is pretty much, yeah, it's moderate to high throughout the majority of the state with exceptions down along the Delaware Bay. Those counties are not doing too bad. And again, RSV and flu are not doing too bad right now as well. All right, taking a look at New Jersey hospitalizations, they 356 people in the hospital, 16 people in a ventilator, 39 people in the ICU, and let's check on discharges. 44 people were discharged from the hospital. Crossing the river over into Pennsylvania. 825 EMS incidents yesterday in Philadelphia. Do I know what those calls were? No, but we know with it getting hot again, some of this could be heat-related illness. And remember I said it was 94 degrees here in Philadelphia? It is now up to 95 degrees here in my section of northeast Philadelphia, which is, wow, it's getting hot out there. It wasn't it wasn't actually supposed to hit 95 today. Today was only supposed to be 92, and that's a bad sign for what's coming during the rest of the week. Take a look at the suburbs. Montgomery County, there are some incidents right now, 13 incidents at the moment. Wow, Chester County looks relatively busy here, and it just refreshed on us, but it's still busy. Sick person, sick person, sick person. Respiratory difficulty, hypotension, heart problems, abdominal pain, seizures, a lot of different things going on here, so it is busy in the burbs right now for a holiday. All right, taking a look at New York State, I don't think we're going to have any update from New York State today. Now, 2,794 that's where the last update was from last week. And hospitalizations in New York State last week on the last update was at 1,111 people in the hospital. We'll get another update on that tomorrow. And now taking a look, let's just do a couple international... Um, I'm going to move myself to the right. Let's do, let's do a couple international countries. South Korea, cases down 95%. Deaths down 91%. Romania, cases up 15%, no deaths reported. Israel, cases are up 32%, so they are still rising there. Uh, deaths, 10 versus 5, so that's up 100%. Mako, cases are up 11%, no deaths reported. Switzerland, no deaths reported. Cases are up 7%. Let's just quick on uh, click on Europe for a second. I want to see if there's anything here from Germany. No, nothing on Germany. I don't know why we can't get uh, case updates on world meters from Germany right now. I'm going to have to do some searching on Google to see if we can get an update on the numbers out of Germany. But for now, uh, look at this. Ireland, while cases are down 9%, deaths are up 29%. Uh, Italy, Italy, cases are down 44%. Deaths are down 52%. And let's just end today on Poland. Poland cases up 46% and their deaths 2 versus 1 so that's uh, doubled. Alrighty guys that does for today's pandemic update. We'll have another pandemic update again tomorrow. If you like this update give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this hit that subscribe button down below. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time stay safe everyone and have a fantastic day.